Hello, I'm Anna Wiltos, and today I want to say that conservatives need to answer the Groypers. And why do they need to answer the Groypers? Uh, Groypers being uh, sort of, in the current political context of what the Groypers are doing, these are people that are asking questions to conservatives, questions that challenge the conservative ideas and the consistency of conservative ideology. So some of these questions could be relating to, let's say, uh, the relationship between the US and Israel, or questions relating to the Holocaust, uh, and um, other things such as, let's say, race relations and, and things like that. Things which the conservatives have particular viewpoints on, which are being challenged by Groypers, uh, people who have somewhat different viewpoints on these things, who also uh, believe in, let's say, an America first perspective, which is popular among conservatives, but who have a different world view on how that runs out. So, for example, in the case of the Holocaust, why should conservatives have to answer, let's say, to Holocaust deniers? Well, the reason is because the Holocaust happened a long time ago, all right? And that means that a lot of these younger people, a lot of these Zoomers that are coming out, they obviously would not have the manifest evidence of that uh, in their lives. In other words, the same evidence that, let's say, the greatest generation, the silent generation, the boomers, that they had in their lives, the same narratives that they heard growing up, the same pictures that they saw, those are things that a lot of the younger generations don't have. Which means that these younger generations who did not grow up in a time when the Holocaust was something that was being well studied and, and well talked about, that they obviously are going to question the historicity of those events, not necessarily in an anti-Semitic way, although it could be in that way, uh, or in a way that is uh, pro-Nazi, not necessarily in those ways, but simply from a, let's say, skeptical perspective of looking at history and seeing what is true and what is false. So when conservatives, when they are being confronted with questions like that, and instead of trying to give resources of evidence, and instead of trying to answer those questions in an intellectually honest way, they instead view it as an attack on their ideology, and an attack on uh, how they view the world. Uh, essentially, the, the inner mind working of a boomer conservative is that when someone's asking him these questions, that person already knows the truth and rejects it. But of course, that's not how truth works. That's not how people learn. People learn throughout their lives. So just because your parents knew something to be true doesn't mean that your children are going to know the same things to be true. And therefore, it is very important that each generation has full access to the evidences that are used to prove various historical events rather than simply saying, this happened and we're not even going to discuss the possibility of it not having happened. Because that is something that I was very curious about, and that's why I went and I studied and I looked at these things, and now I'm convinced firmly that the uh, genocide did happen. And, of course, there's a lot of myths and, and a lot of uh, exaggerations regarding certain parts of it that also uh, show that certain elements that some people like to talk about didn't happen or it happened in a different way than people generally present it. So in that sense, it's very important for young people to have access to information so that they can discern uh, the truth and the falsehoods of the past, and so that they can study these things. But unfortunately, what's happening with the interaction between the boomer conservatives and a lot of the mainstream conservatives and the Groypers is that when the Groypers ask these questions, the conservatives have no answers. 
Why? Because, for one, they may not have fought these things through. They, of course, perhaps heard these things from their parents, heard these things from people they trust, but they themselves might not have studied these things. And that's okay. It's not important for every single person to have the entirety of human expertise uh, with it, within their minds. But at the same time, it would be good for some people to have such expertise. And also for you to at least know if you have a reliable source to be able to tell someone else what that reliable source is or to be able to say from your own experience of having studied this that this is something that you do believe happened. And of course, on the question of U.S.-Israel relations, obviously there are various reasons why the U.S. is allied to Israel and one of them is because uh, of... Uh, grand strategical reasons that the U.S. wants to have allies in, in the Middle East in varying ways. Another one is that there are some individuals that, in a religious perspective, maybe they might be Judaists in the U.S., or they might be dispensationalist Christians who, in that sense, have a positive view of Israel. At the same time, there's many Christians that have a more negative view of Israel. And I think it's a fair criticism of Israel to point out the policies that they make can in, in some times be in some ways racist in a way that the uh, policymakers in the US try to avoid being so. So in that sense, it is something that is worth looking at and worth studying. But unfortunately, what you have is that a lot of these conservative voices that are very big and are very bold and are very uh, apparent. They're trying to be activists. And when they get confronted by these questions, questions that they should expect in some respects, they simply don't have answers. And instead of saying, I don't have an answer to this, I'll research it, I'll get back to you, I'll uh, perhaps refer you to someone who could answer the question. Instead of doing that, they shut down the conversation. Now, I understand that in some cases, many of these groupers might actually come from a perspective of intellectual dishonesty where they do reject certain things that you would use as evidence and where they might, in, in some ways, stay strong in their position regardless of what you tell them. But the same is true of some of these more conservative individuals as well. But nevertheless, for the purpose of the public discord, I believe that it is important to address these issues. And instead of advocating for people to be de-verified on Twitter and, and, and have uh, their check marks removed and this, that, and, or the other thing, uh, with, of course, the, the blue check mark thing anyway being s such a weird thing in the first place, I, instead of arguing for that, instead of arguing for what is essentially a type of uh, sort of uh, mild deplatforming, you should instead actually try to address these individuals and engage with these individuals. Because these Republicans, they aren't going to say the same thing about, let's say, uh, the, the major Democratic candidates, that they should not be listened to because the Republicans disagree with them, that they shouldn't be listened to at all, that none of their ideas matter. Because if you don't do that, then you can't actually address their ideas and you can't actually win over the hearts and minds of voters, especially voters that are interested in honest leadership, voters that are interested in a leadership that is actually willing to address issues that are raised. And if you instead have a dogmatic mindset about history, where I, I agree with these conservatives that the Holocaust happened, that it was a very bad thing, and that millions of people died. I agree with them, but I don't agree with the attitude that they go about uh, trying to um, essentially implement this as a truth in their lives. It, because in some ways, some of them use it as a stick to beat people over the head, saying, look at this that happened, and aren't you trying to do the same thing, even when those people are obviously not trying to do that? 
And there are people that are trying to do that, but let's be honest, those people aren't very numerous. But at the same time, what they also do is, as I said, they ignore people who have questions regarding it, even if those people were, in theory, coming actually in good faith and actually trying to learn something about what's happening. So in that sense, that's another problem. So that's my opinion. Tell me what you think. Do you think that uh, conservatives, uh, mainstream conservatives are wrong for being so harsh with groipers instead of trying to answer their questions? Do you think that groipers should be deplatformed? What is your opinion on this? Uh, I like a, a good Pepe meme. Of course, you can't do that on the YouTube comments. Well, actually, you can if you use uh, if you uh, space things correctly. You can you can draw a Pepe in the comments. You can draw a Groiper in the comments, and that'd be pretty cool to see one of those. Um, but anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll be seeing you all next time on the Wiltus over and out.